Hello, I'm Carol Hawkins, a longtime member here at Advent. In fact, my history coming into the old church starts about 1971. Um, I want to address the ways that you can be a part of our legacy. Um, the ministries that we have here at this church are so much more than the monies that you provide. It's also in your time. And you're going to get so much more back from them. I think of the friendships that I have made, um, activities that you can get involved in, like book club, young retirees, quilting. Uh, there are plenty of community service opportunities. I'm on the board of Inspiritus, which is our local Middle Tennessee uh, Lutherans in Tennessee, Lutheran Services in Tennessee, um, which we have now combined with Lutheran Services in Georgia, so we are Inspiritus. The big thing we have here in Murfreesboro is a garden program, so if you're just one who doesn't like to get up and speak, and you just want to provide some services, you can bring a shovel and help us spread dirt. There are plenty of ways you can donate. There's a basket out there that has items that you can just put in there for cold patrol. Um, I think one of the messages I have for you is don't wait until somebody asks you to do something. If you just see something, you don't have to ask permission. You don't even have to ask procedures. Just figure out some way to get involved with it. Um, of course, there are all sorts of opportunities for nurturing our faith with our worship, Bible study, um, all of the activities that we go to in this church and outside of the church. Um, I'm not going to list all of the opportunities we have. The church website has those. Um, we also plan to hold a ministry fair where we're going to communicate some of the details about the worship, uh, the service opportunities that we have. And you're going to receive a time and talents form, so you'll fill that out and let us know what you have an interest in doing. But let me tell you a little bit about my journey. So I started here when a friend of mine, I was in high school, and she invited me to come to what they called their teen center, which is similar to what our life program is now. Um, I, the youth at my church were kind of fizzling away, and so I just joined in with hers and met my husband. <laughs> so I guess that's one of the reasons they kept me here. And so my background is teaching Sunday school, um, and then we got pulled in to be um, the youth coordinators, the youth advisors is what we called us at that point. Um, and then after um, after a time, our children came along and we got more involved with Sunday school and Christmas programs. All four of our children were baptized here. Many of my connections were through the youth group because we did that for probably 20 years. So I remember Janelle, I'm sure she's going to be in here somewhere. Um, she was the youth, she was the youth leader. I was the adult, she was the youth, but of course she was running most of the things whenever she could. Um, I have memories of many of the families that, that had children at the same time our children were. The Millers, the Cruise, going camping with the Cruise, um, cleaning up in the kitchen, providing food. Just so many connections that we made over the years. So many friendships, so many memories. But along with that, we had a lot of laughing and sharing. We had a lot of singing because I was part of the choir, the band, any of those things that came along. So I was on council, I was in the choir, I was a fellowship, a youth advisor, nursery volunteer, Sunday school teacher, you name it. So why, why did I do all that? I was raising children, I was working full time as a teacher. Why did I take the time out of the end of my day or sometime during the week to do these things? Because this is my church family. This is where I get support. These are the people who will be here for me and have been here for me. Um, these are the people I consider my friends, some of them older friends that I've known for many years, some of them newer friends, like Allie and Kevin have become friends. Um, dragging my children along, that was a big thing. They, they, my kids went to youth events before they were ever old enough to go to youth events. But because it was important to me to feel connected and to be part of this church. So I want you to know there are plenty of opportunities for you to serve. You can be up front, you can speak, you can be a worship assistant, but you can also come and weed in the gardens or help on a cleanup day or work in our any of our volunteer activities that we will do. There are many opportunities for you. So my thinking is. If you want to truly be a part of the church, 
You have to find something to get involved in, something that will connect you, something that will get you here every Sunday or every week. And I promise you, you're going to get more than you're going to get. Thanks. Hello, this is Julian Gordy. I served until the beginning of September as the Bishop of the Synod, and I'm here to talk to you about what part of your giving in this congregation goes to the Synod and the churchwide organization and what happens with that money that you give. You know, uh, in our age of uh, individualism and independence, the idea that we are a church together about 9,000 plus congregations all over the United States and the Caribbean is a little odd. So many people like to have uh, control over everything, but our congregations for the most part contribute part of the money that people give to them to the Synod and then the Synod uses that money for some of the work that we're asked to do and passes some of that on to the churchwide organization. It works like this. Um, We've been asking for years congregations to try to give at least 10% of what they receive to mission support. Every bit of that money that comes to the Synod, half of that money gets given to the churchwide organization and the other half the Synod keeps. And that makes up most of the income for the Synod. In the Synod, what we do with that money is provide youth events. We prepare candidates who will be deacons and pastors in the church. We work with congregations that may be having uh, difficulties and conflicts and so forth. And then we help congregations that are in the position that Advent is in now, who are looking for a new pastor. So we do that uh, mobility, we call it, looking, helping you find a pastor. The 50% of the money that goes on to the churchwide organization does all kinds of things in the world. It supports seminaries, it supports uh, it supports colleges. It supports our global ministry connections with churches, Lutheran and otherwise, but particularly Lutherans all over the world. Our synod, for instance, has four churches that are our global mission partners. Two of them are the Lutheran Church in Malaysia and the Lutheran Church in Singapore, churches which we started, ministers from this synod did, in the 50s, and which have now gone on to start churches in uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam. All of these are part of the Lutheran World Federation and part of the money that goes to uh, mission support goes to support those relationships. It also goes to do things like providing uh, the work that gets done to provide the worship book that you use here at this service. So uh, all of those are things that we do together uh, that we would, couldn't possibly do as single congregations. Things like our Affirm Youth event every uh, summer and the, and the big churchwide uh, youth gathering that happens every three years. It's important work that gets done because we are a church together. We talk about doing God's work with our hands and some of that work, most of that work is done locally in our congregations, but some of it is done across the four states of this Senate and across the United States and around the world. So when you think about putting that money in the offering plate, remember that it doesn't all stay here. Some of it goes to do good work around the world. Thanks a lot and blessings on your stewardship efforts.